A massive traffic jam has started in the ocean, where more than 150 cargo ships are waiting for their turn to pass through the Panama Canal. Each ship is willing to pay $400,000 to the Panamanian government to pass through, but they are still not being allowed. There is no maintenance work happening, nor is the route closed for any reason. This engineering marvel, once a source of global pride, is currently facing a major crisis against nature itself. Today, we explore one of the world's most important maritime shortcuts. There are two main shortcuts for cargo ships. The Suez Canal in Egypt, which connects East Asian countries like China, Japan, Taiwan, and Singapore to Europe, and the Panama Canal in Central America. If these countries' cargo ships need to go to East America or East Canada, or from Europe to West America, they use the Panama Canal. There are about 50,000 cargo ships in the world, and 70% of them use these two shortcuts. If either the Suez or Panama Canal faces any issues, the entire world will be affected. This was evident in 2021 when the Ever Given ship blocked the Suez Canal for six days. If a similar incident happens again, ships would have to take a longer route, resulting in more time and extra fuel costs, which would ultimately be passed on to consumers. Shipping companies pay hefty tolls to use these shortcuts and must comply with the authorities' demands. But why are these canals so essential? Imagine a ship from the United Kingdom in Europe needs to go to San Francisco on the west coast of America. The ship has two routes. It can either travel through the entire North Atlantic Ocean, cross the southern tip of South America at Cape Horn, enter the Pacific Ocean, and then reach San Francisco. This route is over 25,000 kilometers long, taking 28 days and consuming about 8 million liters of fuel, costing the shipping company $32 million. The second route is to go from the United Kingdom directly to the Caribbean Sea, use the Panama Canal shortcut, and then enter the Pacific Ocean to reach San Francisco. Using the Panama Canal reduces the distance to just 14,000 kilometers, saving significant time and fuel costs, approximately $16 million. The Panama Canal is an engineering masterpiece, a beacon of human ingenuity that dramatically alters global trade routes. The canal's construction, completed in 1914, was a monumental effort involving immense human and financial resources. It functions by lifting ships up 85 feet to the main elevation of the Panama Canal and then lowering them back down. The canal's locks, each chamber 110 feet wide and 1,000 feet long, use gravity to move water to raise and lower ships. It's a system that requires vast quantities of fresh water, and therein lies the current problem. The Panama Canal relies on water from Gatun Lake, a vast artificial lake created by damming the Shagers River. The lake is crucial, providing the 52 million gallons of fresh water needed for each ship to pass through the canal. However, the region has been experiencing severe drought conditions, exacerbated by climate change. This has led to lower water levels in Gatun Lake, directly impacting the canal's operations. The authorities have had to impose restrictions on the number of ships that can pass through daily and the weight of the ships, leading to a significant backlog and delays. Furthermore, the ongoing climate crisis poses a long-term threat to the canal's viability. Changes in rainfall patterns and increased evaporation rates could further deplete water levels in Gatun Lake making it even more challenging to maintain the canal's operational capacity. The Panamanian government and the Panama Canal Authority are exploring solutions, such as investing in new water management technologies and alternative sources of water. However, these measures will require substantial time and investment, and the immediate crisis remains. As global trade continues to grow, the importance of the Panama Canal cannot be overstated. It facilitates the movement of goods worth billions of dollars annually, significantly impacting global supply chains. The current traffic jam in the canal is a stark reminder of the vulnerabilities in our interconnected world. It underscores the need for resilient infrastructure and proactive measures to mitigate the impacts of climate change. The problem now is that the Panama authorities cannot let more ships pass through the canal. To understand this issue, we need to know how the Panama Canal works. This engineering marvel was designed by a genius, but not one who could counter nature. The Panama Strip is a 30-kilometer wide land strip in Central America, with oceans on both sides. Unlike the Suez Canal, a canal could not be dug here because the land is 30 meters above sea level. Therefore, ships are lifted 30 meters up to the level of Gatun Lake and then lowered back down to the ocean on the other coast. This is done using locks at the canal's opening, which act like stairs to lift the ships. The first locks door opens, the ship enters, 
and the door closes. Water from the second lock fills the first lock, and by gravity, the water levels equalize, allowing the ship to move to the second lock. This process continues until the ship reaches the level of Gatun Lake. The Panama Canal relies on fresh water from Gatun Lake, which also supplies drinking water to the local population. Each ship passing through the canal uses as much water as 500,000 people drink daily. At its peak, 38 ships pass through the canal daily, using the equivalent water of 19 million people. Gatun Lake, fed by rainwater from nearby mountains, replenishes the water used by the ships. However, every seven years, Panama experiences very little rainfall, creating a worsening crisis each cycle. Last year, in 2023, there was no rain and the weather department predicts very little rain in 2024 as well. Given this situation, the Panama authorities face a tough choice. Operate the canal or provide drinking water to the people. The canal generates $4.32 billion annually, a significant part of Panama's GDP. Closing the canal affects this income, but keeping it open creates a water shortage. Using pumps to add seawater to Gatun Lake is not an option as it would make the water salty and undrinkable. To save Gatun Lake's water, the authorities have reduced the number of ships passing through the canal daily from 38 to 18 and are only allowing ships with fewer containers to pass. These measures have caused ships to carry 40% less cargo, with the remaining cargo loaded onto new ships. This has increased the total number of ships waiting to pass through the canal. Those without advance bookings may have to wait up to 15 days. Additionally, a 10% extra cost is being charged under a freshwater surcharge. This has disrupted routes from Europe to West America and East America to East Asia, causing delays and requiring advance bookings for the Panama Canal three months in advance, even before the goods are manufactured. Several proposals are being made to solve this issue, including building bio-ocean corridors where ships would unload containers at one coast, which would then be transported by truck or train to the other coast and reloaded onto other ships. However, the Andes mountain range in South America's western parts poses a significant barrier to laying rail tracks or road networks. One such corridor is being built in Mexico, a 190-kilometer wide area with oceans on both sides. The Mexican government is constructing a rail network and modern ports with a total cost of $2.85 billion, expected to be completed by 2030. This route will be cheaper and faster than the Panama Canal, capable of handling 1.3 million containers annually, compared to the Panama Canal's 2.6 million containers. In conclusion, while these solutions are promising, it will take several years to implement them fully. The future of the Panama Canal looks uncertain, with hopes that rains will return and the canal can operate at full capacity. However, with climate change being a reality, there is a possibility that the canal might have to close permanently due to water shortages. Thank you for sticking with me till the end. If you enjoyed this video, please like, share, and subscribe to our channel. Until next time, take care 